you couldn't tell from past reviews, I am Canadian. I have the red and white flag in front of my home, our dollar is shit, and we make a lot of shows that get exported to other countries, especially in the U.S. One of which is what I'll be talking about today, and it got cancelled in the U.S. before it aired all of its episodes. Good sign! Cyber 6 is an animated adaptation of an Argentinian comic produced by Vancouver-based Network of Animation and animated by TMS, the same studio that would animate Sonic X a few years later and release in 1999 to glowing reviews, even winning Best Animated Production and Best Overall Sound of an Animated Production at the second annual Leo Awards. But this wouldn't be the first attempt at bringing the Argentinian comic to life, because a few years prior to the animated release, a live-action adaptation was released in Argentina and was cancelled shortly after due to low ratings. And after looking at its pilot, which is one of the only episodes I could find of this version uploaded to the internet as of this recording, I can see why. Not only does the production look bad, but it was really... Really freaking boring to watch. Also, apparently in this world, criminals seem to be immune to gunfire or something because when Cyber 6 gets into a scuffle with an officer and she tosses him into debris or whatever, he pulls out a small rocket launcher and freaking shoots her with it. Jeez, wanna drop nukes on these criminals while you're at it? But yeah, enough about Cyber 6. Let's talk about Cyber 6. So the story revolves around Adrian Seidelman, a genetically engineered creation of Dr. Von Riker, who moves to Meridiana and in the day poses as a teaching assistant while becoming our superhero persona Cyber Six at night in order to stop Riker's son Jose and his group of generic minions slash monsters of the week. Along the way, she forms a friendship slash potential relationship with another teacher, Lucas, and also reunites with the similar creation Cyber 29, now known as Data 7, and had his human brain moved into a freaking panther. And that's about it for the story. Adrian doing stuff from her daytime life, Jose and his group of minions are Monster of the Week doing bad, Adrian turns into Cyber 6, and the day is saved. Unfortunately, the series did not end on a happy note. The final episode, which I said previously wasn't aired in the US due to the show getting cancelled, ended on a cliffhanger, and the fates of Riker and Cyber 6 were unknown, or to be more specific, Riker, since the lights in Adrian's room were on near the end of the episode, implying that she survived. So why did it end on a cliffhanger? Well, from what I looked up, the studios making the show had several conflicts, one of which was high production costs that eventually resulted in the show not continuing after season 1. But okay, fine, like other shows, it's possible this was mainly made to get people to buy the source material, so I can just pick up the source material and read that. Is what I would like to do, but there's a problem. See, the comics were made in Argentina, and they were never officially translated into English. The closest we got was a collection in French, and the only English translations I could find were fan-made, and they didn't even fully translate the series as of this recording. Maybe someday the fan translations will be complete, or better yet, we'll get an official English release, but for now, the only way I was able to find out what happened after the series was go on wikis that had brief descriptions of future events. So even if this was made to get people to buy the source material, it doesn't work here. Since a good chunk of these episodes are Monster of the Week episodes, there's not really a whole lot I can say about the story. It certainly exists, but there's not a lot of substance here in terms of the overall plot, and I think that might have to do with the fact that a lot of the stuff from the comic had to be trimmed slash cut out entirely. I won't delve into everything cut out for the sake of pacing, but a lot of the backstory for Adrian is not present in this version, as well as the backstory for the main antagonist, and even a lot of the darker themes slash story concepts that had an impact on several characters had to be cut out to fit the mostly kid-friendly age rating since, well, the comics had some really dark slash sexual content in it. And yet, it was allegedly even more neutered in the Fox Kids version. They trimmed the intro down to 30 seconds, removed a lot of the violence, and even cut out 5 minutes of each episode, resulting in 18 freaking minute versions. Say what you will about Canada, but it kinda says something when the neutered version isn't aired over here this time. However, I say allegedly because no copies of the Fox Kids version exist online as of this point, save for the intro, so a lot of these stories are second hand, and the episodes in the DVD released in 2014 are the Canadian versions, which are uncensored. So it's possible that it wasn't censored that much, but it's also possible that it was. Either way, the story on its own isn't all that interesting slash great in this version. Even if it was due to it being watered down to fit the age rating, and even then, that doesn't excuse this plot being forgettable slash flat in the long run. I would say that this is where the show gets better with its character element, but unfortunately the characters in the show are just okay at best to me. I like Cyber 6's personality and seeing how she handles her struggles, whenever the show decides to focus on them, that is, which is rare. And I do like her chemistry with Lucas, as well as Data 7 and the runaway Julian. But her mellow drama about her secret identity, when it does show up, that is, does become a bit too much at points in the series. And there isn't really a whole lot about her outside of that that makes me all that interested. Hell, that bit in the first episode where she states that she needs sustenance, which she needs to live, is ignored after the pilot up until the final episode of the series. What, did she find a way to live without it in every other episode? Well, no. Episode 13 establishes that she does still need it, 
So then why ignore this for most of the fucking series? That could have given her some developments that she needs to survive and all that. If not for her, then maybe develop the bond with her and Lucas for her because of this? Lucas was also an okay character. While I did like his personality and chemistry with Cyber 6 as well as Deus 7 to an extent, there isn't really much done to develop him further as a character or even really develop the bond with him in Cyber 6. He certainly existed, but that's all I can say about him, though. Data 7 also doesn't have much going for him. I mean, he's just a panther. But still, given how he was related to Cyber 6 and all, they could have done a lot more to his character. That being said, I still like seeing him on the show. I like the chemistry with him in Cyber 6, as well as him and Julian. Hell, one of my favorite bits is in Episode 7, where Julian fools Data 7 with a cat's cradle, and I felt bad for him since, well... He's just trying to protect the kid from harm. But I'd be lying if I didn't laugh at Data 7 who kicked ass in previous episodes, getting stopped by basically string and face planning. What can I say? It's not hard to entertain me. <laughs> the other side characters were either just there, okay, or just stupid, especially in episode 9 where they're told not to look at the eye and do so anyways. Hey son, a giant eyeball, let's look directly at it. But the screen said no. Oh, please. When has warnings ever been useful? That time he tried to eat a diet bar. So let's move on to the villains, and honestly, they don't give me much to offer either. Jose is an annoying kid with an equally annoying voice. Most of the monsters of the week aren't interesting, except for maybe Terra, who was actually given time to showcase signs of human kindness in the leg for his tragic sacrifice at the end. And then they try to write off that success in episode 12 and fail with a character who was flat the whole way through until the end when they decided, Okay, I'll be a good guy now and kill myself because train tracks. And then there's the main antagonist himself. Dr. Von Reichter. Oh boy, this character. All he does throughout most of the goddamn run is send out monsters and then blames his son Jose for his failures. Even though he has multiple chances to take action himself, he doesn't take them until the final episode and that gets easily thwarted by Jose and then he maybe gets killed by a random nameless creation. I say maybe because again, cliffhanger in. Oh sure, he created Cyber 6 and Data 7 as well as other characters, but outside of those actions, there's nothing about this film that makes me interested in him or even care when he's on screen. I know he's further explained or more interesting in the comics, but again, I'm looking at the animated version, and the animated version falls flat on its face when it comes to this main antagonist. He's boring, he's not threatening, he just sucks as the main antagonist of the series. Thankfully, the animation is a big step up. Well, not as great as, say, the Batman animated series from the 90s, the world of Cyber 6 is a pretty one to look at for the time. The coloring slash light's pretty good, the backgrounds and scene composition are nice, and the character designs, while well, drawing in comparison to other superhero shows at the time, does a good job recreating the original comic art style. Which leaves the audio and, well, it's a mixed bag. Well, the voice acting is certainly fine, with special mentions going to Cyber 6's VA Kathy Wesseluck, who you may know as Spike from My Little Pony Gen 4, and Lucas's VA Michael Dobson, who voiced Starscream in the Transformers Unicron trilogy. The background music isn't all that interesting or memorable, not helped by them constantly reusing songs in each episode to the point where by episode 13, it has worn out its freaking welcome. Hell, there are even some cases where the voices are nearly overpowered by the music. Now, since I can't play show audio due to copyright reasons, I'm going to have to resort to improvising for this, which means you get to hear my terrible voice acting attempt. Yeah, Another thing I noticed on my viewing of the series were cases where they used inappropriate sounds for creatures that don't match it at all, i.e. giving the octopus snail thing a roar from Jaws 4 slash Tom and Jerry, or giving bluebirds the cry of a hawk. These were simple problems with simple solutions, yet they didn't take it. Hell, could you imagine what would happen to these people did other series? How the hell would that go? 1776. Thankfully, the opening and ending themes are a bit better. The ending is a nice piece to listen to, and while not all the lyrics for the opening aren't that great on its own, it's still got a catchy beat, and some of the lyrics are decent, especially the chorus. But yeah, the animated version of Cyber 6 is just okay at best. And even if a lot of this show's flaws are due to its age ratings less changes to the source material, it doesn't excuse this show's failings. I think one of the few things that could have saved this thing, outside of maybe having the age rating to allow for the darker slash deeper stuff, would be giving it more time. At least with the second season, they could have had a chance to make the series in a better note than its original season, and or develop its characters further slash make them more interesting. While I did grow up with this show, watching it as an adult, I can appreciate certain things that I didn't get as a kid, like the music and their attempt at making the story interesting, even if it doesn't work most of the time in this show. But other stuff I was okay with as a kid, I am not okay with now. I wouldn't even recommend this to kids nowadays, since there are other shows targeted to the same audience with darker elements or even better storytelling than Cyber 6. Maybe if you grew up with this show, then I could potentially recommend it to see if your opinion has changed or not since you first saw it as a kid, but that's a stretch. I probably pissed off a bunch of fans of this property, and more power to you if you enjoyed the show for the record, but I honestly didn't enjoy the show that much. It's not terrible, far from it, but it's not amazing either. It's somewhere in between for me. So that concludes this review. I'm David Grimm, and thanks for watching.